I certainly have particular interest in the need for the Republican Party to come forward with some health care reform ideas. Um, I think we have to, to apply free market principles for that. I think we can look at some simple changes that would be very effective in the moderation of health care expense, including uh, the ability to buy and sell insurance across state lines, the expansion of health savings accounts, and in particular, President Trump's um, 2020 budget that speaks to tightening the belt on pharmaceutical companies to ensure bringing down the cost of medications, doing that by uh, contract negotiation and um, uh, other means that will apply pressure to the pharmaceutical industry. I think, too, I'd be very interested in helping uh, bring infrastructure legislation that would address some of the issues on our bases that are still needing so much attention from the hurricane. Uh, and I would support Senator Tillis and Burr's efforts along those lines as well. What, if any, policy positions of President Trump and his administration would you differ with? I, I would suppose the one that comes to mind would be the question of his use of tariffs right now. Um, as I speak for the district, I understand that there are times that we support the president when he is looking at the, the uh, lay of, the, of the, the country and what's best for the country. I know for our district, um, as I have spent the last three weeks learning the issues and the problems, particularly in agriculture, I've been impressed uh, with the problems that our farmers are facing as it relates to hurricane recovery and certainly as it relates to the fall of commodities and tariffs. However, I'm not certain I would really say I don't support him in that. I just, um, I think that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Otherwise, I really can't think of anything with which I disagree with him in the past two years. I think this issue is such a good example of um, a very honorable profession that's so important to our state, but has become um, just put away by overregulation. So like others who have spoken, I think deregulation of this industry is so very significant. As I agree, too, that infrastructure needs that help our watermen are mandatory. That is dredging so they can get in and out easily um, and maintain uh, their livelihood the way that they would like to through the waterways. I agree with the President that there is indeed an emergency in regard to the way we're handling our immigration. Um, I approach this issue as I would a pediatric trauma victim who's bleeding. And that is, we first have to address the bleeding, and that is at the border. Um, I certainly support his efforts, including technology and increasing manpower there. Then I think we have to turn internally and address the problem. And we've heard many of those issues, but I think number one and foremost, we're in this, we're in this situation because under President Obama, we were lenient with enforcing the law. We have immigration law. And we've got to enforce the law, and we have to apply resources to do that. I think, secondly, we need to address streamlining the guest worker program that will bring immigrants in to work and, and support our economy. Certainly, that impacts our district. And thirdly, I think we need to take a long look at the immigration courts, because that is a bottleneck, and that's the reason we've ended up in this asylum situation that we're into. So right now, their dockets have increased 500% um, in the past nine years. So that's another issue we need to address. Very first question. What is your position pertinent to the national debt? Would you cast a vote as a member of Congress that would add to the national debt? I would not. Final answer. Yeah. President Trump has endorsed federal legislation allowing so-called red flag gun seizures where courts can order firearms taken away from individuals deemed to be a threat to themselves or others. Would you support this legislation? So I think this is a difficult question. Um, and, and in all honesty, I would like to know how that determination is made. I have not read that law, that proposal, and I, um, as a physician, would find that frightening to think the government could do this. At the same time, um, uh, of course, I, I'm one who feels strongly about um, proper uh, gun ownership. So I would, I, would, I would not support that legislation, but I'd like to know how they would determine who would be the one making that determination of the mental health status of someone. So I find that frightening that we would not be able to know how that would be determined, and I think that's threatening to the Second Amendment. I believe in a strong America, and that is America that is based on life. 
I believe that our country was founded on the principles of life. We hear the, the, the echo of scripture in our Constitution, and we see it reflected in our First Amendment precious liberties. We see it reflected also in the importance of small and less intrusive government that honors those liberties and protects those liberties, and also honors the family and protects the family. Very often I have the privilege of putting a stethoscope to a child's chest. And when I do that, I'm thinking, I can write a prescription for this child and maybe alleviate a small problem. But as I'm praying for this child, I'm thinking what this child needs is this kind of hope. That's a hope in America that's based on life. If that's what you think also, and that's what you want for your children and grandchildren, I hope you'll consider supporting me, Joan Perry. Thank you.